bring in criminal defense attorney Lexi Rigdon. Lexi, there are a lot of theories floating around out there as to exactly what happens by the end of today. Yeah. There's questions as to mm -hmm. what the end of the day even constitutes. Is it close of business? Is it 11.59? What is your theory as to what happens? Oh, gosh, you know, I, I'm not a betting person, but it seems like Trump is always able to pull a rabbit out of a hat. I mean, he has he has options. He probably has more options in some ways than a lot of people would in this situation. He does have donors. He does have supporters. He has potentially the ability to ask for funds from Truth Social going public, although those are frozen. So I don't know if he's going to be able to do it by the end of the day, but I suspect at some point he's going to be able to do it. But there's also probably some political pressure on all of those, those companies that he asked the money for, because they might not want to be involved at all with this entire mess, uh, just, just on a PR basis. And so he definitely has the odds stacked against him today, but we'll just have to wait and see because he is not the type of person as we see that backs down easily from a fight. Yeah, well, we're also wait, uh, awaiting, Lexi, this appeals court ruling that really could throw the former president a lifeline here. There's this panel of judges that could say a bond of this size is insane. We're either gonna mm -hmm. reduce it or waive it entirely. What are the chances this appeals court rules in Donald Trump's favor, and when do you expect that decision to come down? Well, that decision might be coming down sometime this week. It might not be today, but he's basically argued that the calculation itself was inaccurate. It's way too high. This was a victimless crime. There were actually no losses suffered by these banks, and the fines against him are excessive under the Eighth Amendment. And so, Hopefully for Donald Trump, the appeals court does step in, because if it doesn't, then Letitia James has the green light to start doing whatever she needs to do to try to collect the judgment. But it's not that easy to collect a judgment. Most judgments go uncollected. So he is certainly not judgment proof. He's got, despite what, what some in the media say, where he's, he's quote unquote broke, which is laughable. If somebody's yeah. got $500 million, they're being described as being broke. He doesn't have a, a ton of liquidity in comparison to what, what it is that he needs in order to post this bond. And he's not willing to spend all of his cash money on giving it to essentially New York State as opposed to keeping it for his campaign for now. Let's get into the complexity, but in as simple a way as possible. Putting a lien on a property is not an instantaneous process. It is a very complicated process, potentially puts you behind other creditors in terms of your priority. So do you expect with that as the backdrop that she is going to go after his bank accounts first, cash money, more liquid, albeit complicated because there are some other people on his accounts and they themselves do not have a judgment against them? Yes. I, I mean, freezing the bank accounts is probably the easiest thing for her to do at this point, but none of this is necessarily easy at all. I mean, there are there are lawyers who make their money as, as collecting debt. It's, it's complicated, and it's especially complicated when you have properties owned probably by, by businesses. I mean, they're not necessarily owned in the name of Donald Trump. They're owned in the name of LLCs or whatever other business entities they're owned with other people. So this is a complex process. Now, she campaigned on this, which is wholly inappropriate. I, I mean, I can't even, arguably speaking, I think that campaigning on this is perhaps the most politically motivated of all of the cases, because she did this when there was no actual harm suffered and before she had even looked into him. I mean, there was no there was no there there. She just decided to run on a campaign of getting him. And so uh, this is just, this is very unsavory. And I, I just think that the politics of this are really inappropriate. But I think that it's going to, she's going to do whatever she can to move this ball forward because that's exactly what she ran on. And she wants to needle him very clearly. Yeah, in 2017, Letitia James said that she's going to go after Trump because his administration is too male, too pale, and too stale. Uh, but going after the properties, as Todd was talking about, takes time, takes resources, mm -hmm. and all of that comes down in the form of taxpayer dollars. So. Who knows, if this plays out, it could eventually politically backfire on her. Trump is also expected to attend right. a hearing today at 10 a.m. on the New York hush money case where a judge could set a new trial date. So a lot happening, as always, when it comes to the legal front. Lexi, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. If I can You're just quickly welcome. interject on something that you asked, this is going to get overturned at some point in the appeals process. This is a violation of the Eighth Amendment. If it goes all the way to the Supreme Court, that's what's going to happen. The problem is, if these properties are sold, 
it's tough to get properties back. It's a lot easier to get cash back. Yeah. So that's a and major that, concern for yeah, Trump Yeah, that's something that the appeals court could take into yes. consideration. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.